Hey, I'm Chris Zep from Make Everything, and today we're working on better dust collection for our 2x72 belt grinder. Check it out. All right, so here's what I'm currently using for my belt grinder dust collection. This is like a, I think it's called a big gulp hood. Um, and it's just a regular dust collection fitting. What's nice, it has a little grill at the bottom. And I have it hung on a screw over here. And this is for anything that's not gonna produce a heavy amount of sparks. This will be for dust, uh, for wood, if I'm grinding uh, at a low RPM and I'm not shooting a lot of sparks, this is great. This goes into my dust collector, which is over there. Um, and that's, that's it, it's pretty straightforward. When I'm grinding heavy sparks, you see these two poles here, I take a five gallon pail and I actually wedge it in there and I'll fill this up with water and that'll collect, you know, like heavy grinding sparks. The problem is right here, a lot of sparks and a lot of material gets back in here, it makes a huge mess. All that stuff gets in the air and I can't stand it. So the idea here is to optimize this so I can use both the dust collector and a bucket of water for the two applications. So let's take a look what we're gonna use. All right, so here's what I've got here. This is a piece of four inch PVC. Um, this piece in particular is 15 inches long. I've got two blast gates, a Y fitting, and then this, which is a smaller uh, dust fitting. And the reason I'm gonna go with a smaller one is because I wanna optimize that airflow that I'm gonna be pulling out of the dust collector. The other stuff I have is some half inch by eighth inch and some three quarter by eighth inch mild steel, and we're gonna use these for brackets. So let's get started. I happen to have this Dynaflex window sealant open, so I'm gonna use that to seal this up. So I'm just using the aluminum foil uh, HVAC tape to join these pieces together. I could use a small section of hose, but I have this and this will be rigid enough. The other thing too is that this is kind of a prototype and I'm not sure how long it's gonna last, so I don't wanna go too crazy. I have a good feeling that this is gonna work fine, but if it doesn't, it'll be easy enough to take it apart as long as I use this tape. Okay, so the next step is gonna to be to get a small section of dust collector hose. And the reason I'm using this is because I want some flexibility in where this is gonna be underneath the, the grinding belt. Um, I'm just gonna slide this on there. I like to use actual hose clamps instead of the ones that usually come with dust collection fittings. I've just found that they hold a lot better. The, the dust collection fitting ones never work great. Also, try and remember to put both of the clamps on before you start. And this fitting is gonna wanna be perpendicular to this fitting. So this one's gonna go straight out and this one's gonna go vertically this way. And this will all make sense when we get over to the grinder. Let's take a look. So the idea here is that I want to have a Y section so that I can have a bucket full of water down here and when I need to get to it I can open this blast gate and I also want to have access to my dust collector hose on this side. The reason we use this here is because we're going to use that steel to make a bracket that's going to allow this piece to move up and down so that when I'm using different grinding attachments I have that mobility. So this is actually going to live all the way up here with this pretty much scrunched in all the way. 
because this is probably the lowest I'll ever want it to be. And then I'll have that mobility to go up. So the things we got to make now are some brackets for here and another bracket to attach this to the table so this stays nice and rigid. Okay, so I'm going to be starting out with this dust hood and I'm going to be using the vise to see for sizing. Perfect. The vise is basically going to act as a metal brake here. I'm using a three pound sledgehammer, clamping that steel in the jaws and just bending it around to get those two 90 degree bends. This works really well if you don't have a brake. Again, this is just eighth inch mild steel. It really shouldn't be a problem uh, to bend using a hammer like that. And then I'm cutting it with my little portable bandsaw. I wanted to keep the tools pretty simple for this considering um, you could really do this with a grinder or even a hacksaw if you had to. I'm piloting these holes with a smaller drill bit uh, around an eighth of an inch and just making sure my marks put these holes even on both sides of that bracket. Eventually I'll be chasing these holes up to a quarter inch so that a bolt can go through them. Um, and I just am clamping these to this little two by four block to keep them from spinning out on me, making it a little bit safer of an operation. Once I have both sides drilled, I'm gonna flip the bracket and I'm gonna drill holes through the bottom of it with again, like a 3 16th drill bit so that I can put screws down into my table and mount this bracket nice and solid uh, to the front of my grinder. I'm gonna take my next piece of steel, which is half inch by eighth inch and just make sure that it'll pivot. And then I cut it into two 10 and a half inch pieces. I sort of just guessed an arbitrary length, and now I'm gonna be drilling two pilot holes in these as well, and these are gonna be for pivots. Now these, instead of being drilled out to a quarter, I'm gonna chase these with a number seven drill, and then I'm gonna tap them with a quarter 20 tap. And I'm just using a little bit of tap magic fluid on this and just putting them through in and out with my drill. This works totally fine in eighth inch material. I can now clamp this back together and throw some quarter inch uh, bolts in there and just make sure that they pivot. I wanted to use Allen key bolts here so that I could more easily adjust them and tighten them up if I had to. You can get the idea of the functionality there. I'll take this over to the grinder and I had marked the arm of my grinder so that I could not have to deal with a belt here. And I tried first by mounting this bracket to the front section of the table and I think it wound up being too close to my body, I wanted it closer to the grinder, so I decided to take the arm off the grinder and move it in a little bit closer. I wanna get as much mobility out of this as I possibly can, and I felt like if it was closer to the grinder, I would have a little bit more up and down without pushing the dust boot too far out. And I make a note of where that pivot point is on the arm, and I just mark it in pencil. All right, so now that I did some of that fit up, I know exactly what I have to do to uh, get this where I want it to be. So we're gonna take this apart and drill those pivoting holes that are gonna hold on to the actual dust hood itself. Now it's important that these holes be in the exact same place. So I'm gonna try just bolt these together and then clamp them and drill that hole. So with these two brackets, I was able to just thread a bolt right through both of them and then drill straight through. Again, I'm piloting this with like a 3 16 and then I'm going to chase it with a number seven again. And here I'm going to be threading these two holes one more time with the quarter by 20 um, tap. So this works out so that I have two perfectly evenly spaced brackets with those two holes on there. And then I'm just cutting them with the bandsaw again really quick. Kind of a rough operation but it works out and now i'm just taking a quarter inch drill and drilling through both sides of the dust hood i am careful here to make sure that they're even the idea is that if you make any of these parts uh, non-symmetrical you're going to get some racking when you bolt this thing together so i wanted to make sure everything was nice and parallel uh, and everything was where it needed to be i'm just throwing a handful of washers on there i used three washers on the outside of the bolts here so that I would have the room. The bracket I made wound up being a little bit offset, a little bit wider than it had to be, but these spacers work fine to uh, get me where I need to be. The Allen key bolts tighten up nice and they are stainless, which means they'll last even if there's some abuse from water. I'm bolting everything together here, adding washers where I need them just to make sure that things move nice and 
fluidly and can be tightened up. Perfect. Now I'm back over at the grinder and I can give this an install. I'm looking for the holes that I had when I first did my mock-up and I'll just follow those. So I mentioned before about supporting this pipe. The reason I have to do that is because I really want this to be under some sort of compression so that when I want the extra height out of it, oh cool, I just got that black sealant all over my hand. That was nice. So I talked about supporting this before and uh, the reason that that's gonna be important is because I wanna be able to get the motion and I want this to stay in the same spot. So I'm gonna put some brackets back over to the bench and that'll keep this thing nice and rigid and it won't go anywhere. Maybe have it sit on this. For the brackets, I wound up just using some extra one by three that I had sitting around. This is just some pine boards that I had. Um, I'm screwing them into the leg of my bench. This worked out perfect in terms of my layout, but if you didn't have a leg on your bench set up like this, you could easily just make another bracket um, and screw it even into the floor if you had to. I had to do a little bit of an offset on the right side and keep it so that there was tension on the pipe at all times by making it a little bit tight. You can see this worked out the way that it would hold that piece of piping up and keep it nice and rigid in there and I'm getting that stupid black sealant all over everything but it's not, no big deal. I just used the porter band over here too, just to cut this pine one by three. It's pretty quick and it was faster than grabbing a handsaw. Now you can see why it's critical that this isn't attached. So I need to be able to get a bucket of water in there and with this flexible hose, it makes this whole operation and this whole setup really easy to move around when you have to. And at this point, it's basically ready to test it out. I decided to switch out for a brand new 80 grit belt so that I could really produce a lot of dust and make sure this thing was working right. I'm starting out here with just a chunk of two x four and I have the blast gate open to the dust collector as you can see. And it's really collecting the majority of the dust. I would say like over 95%. And now switching to the water bucket, you can see the way the sparks just shoot right down the gullet and they wind up in the bucket down below. So this is exactly what I was going for. Um, you can see a few sparks are escaping and a little bit of sawdust escapes, but the majority of the stuff gets captured. Now I just wanted to make sure it worked with the rest of my attachment. So this is a small wheel attachment and I usually use it on the lower arm setting on this grinder. This is a LB1000 grinder. Um, so I'm just adjusting the dust hood here, just making sure that I'm in the right spot. And again, it's a little more difficult to catch sparks with the small wheel grinder, but this is still much better than my old dust hood was doing. Another thing I use a lot is this is a 12 inch, uh, one inch contact wheel. So you can see the way that dust hood really gets right underneath it and will collect any dust that comes through that. I usually don't produce a lot of sparks with this, so it'll be set up with the dust collector. And then the final thing which produces a lot of dust is this large slack belt attachment that I made. I use this a lot for hammer handles and for rounding hammer faces. So you can see how well this collects those sparks and again, it collects the dust really well. The last thing I tested was some titanium. Now this is two inch titanium bar and obviously I wouldn't use the vacuum on this but you can see the way those titanium sparks get down into the bucket and are extinguished almost immediately. Overall, this thing came out great. All right, that about does it for this video. This was a really simple project and I moved through it really quickly, but I hope it was helpful. It accomplished exactly what I wanted out of this dust collection. Um, I've used it a little bit and it's working great. One thing I will say though, is I'm pretty confident I'm gonna burn through this hose if I'm doing any heavy, heavy grinding and the sparks get caught in there. I'm not super worried about it. I always keep a bucket or a cup of water nearby anyway. So I plan on often just dousing some water down there when I'm using the bucket cooling and I'm developing sparks and all that stuff. Overall, this is a major improvement over what I was using before and I'm really happy to start utilizing it uh, more often. If you have any questions, leave them down below. There'll be links to all these fittings um, in the description along with links to my web store where you can buy shirts and other stuff like that. And um, 
I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this kind of stuff, let me know and I'll do more knife making and shop mod videos. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. And I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks.